16 point four price discrimination. In this chapter, we study meaning of price discrimination and its forms, conditions for price discrimination, three types of price discrimination: first degree or perfect price discrimination, second degree and third degree price dis discrimination. Price discrimination, as we have. Assumed in this chapter that the monopolist charges a single price to all buyers, but under certain conditions, the monopolist can increase its profit by charging different prices to different buyers. In, so, in doing so, the monopolist is engaging in price discrimination. The practice of selling a specific product at more than one price when the price differences are not justified by cost differences. The motivation for price discrimination is fairly obvious. If a firm can identify those who are willing to pay a higher price for a good, it can earn more profit from them by charging a higher price. The key idea behind price discrimination is to convert consumer surplus into economic profit. Price discrimination can take three forms. Charging each consumer in a single market the maximum price she or he is willing to pay. It is called perfect price discrimination. For example, airlines charge high fares to business travelers whose demand for travel is inelastic and are for lower, highly restricted, non-refundable fares to attract vacationers and others whose demands are more elastic. Among a unit of a good, charging each consumer one price for the first set of units purchased and a lower price for subsequent units purchased. For example, when Pizza Hut charges $1.10 for one home delivered pizza and $1.14 for two, it is using this type of price discrimination. In this example, the price of the second pizza is $4. Among group of buyers, charging some customers one price and other customers another price. For example, airlines, movie theaters, hotels and many other industries routinely charge a lower price for children and the elderly. The reason is that children and the elderly generally have a lower willingness to pay. Telephone companies have so many ways of getting at different groups that it is difficult to know what they are really change, charging. Movie theaters and golf courses vary their charges on the base of time, for example, higher evening and weekend rates, and age, for example, lower rates for children, senior discounts. Railroad, railroads vary the rate charged per ton mile of freight according to the market value of the product being shipped. The shipper of 10 tons of television sets or refrigerators is charged more than the shipper of 10 tons of gravel or coal. The objective firm is to segment the market into different identifiable group, which is each group having a different elasticity of demand. Conditions for price discrimination. Monopoly power. The seller must be a monopolist or at least must possess some degree of monopoly power that is some ability to control output and price. Market segregation. At relatively low cost to itself, the seller must be able to segregate buyers into distinct classes, each of which has a different willingness or ability to pay for the product. This separation of buyers is usually based on different price elasticities of demand. No resale. The original purchaser cannot resell the product or service. If buyer in the low price segment of the market could easily resell in the high price segment, the monopolist price discrimination strategy would create competition in the high price segment. This competition would reduce the price in the high price segment and undermine the monopolist price discrimination policy. This condition suggests that service industries such as the transportation industry or legal and medical services where resale is impossible are good candidates for price discrimination. Three types of price discrimination. First degree price discrimination or perfect price discrimination, which we'll study in the end. A firm that charges the maximum amount that buyers are willing to pay for each unit is practicing perfect price discrimination. Second degree price discrimination. Monopolists resort to selling techniques that appeal to different groups, sometimes called second degree price discrimination. Examples of this type of market segregation is selling at different unit prices depending on the amount bought or the, through the use of coupons. Generally, buyers such as most businesses and wealthy people who are not price sensitive do not take the time to clip coupons. 
price sensitive buyers often do clip cook coupons and thus get the discounted price some segments of the population such as unemployed also have more time to clip coupons in this case you can see in the figure uh, it is the example of uh, uh, second price second degree price discrimination in this case producer offers different price to different groups of consumers if the if they buy in small quantity they pay p1 price if they buy in bulk they pay the low price that is p4 as shown in the figure third degree price discrimination when the monopolist can readily identify discrete market segments with different elasticities the monopolist charges the profit maximizing prices for each of the segments this strategy is sometimes called third degree price discrimination some exams third degree price discrimination include charging different price according to age or by charging the same price to everyone by providing financial aid for lower income buyers which is a universal method used by institutions of higher education another common form of price discrimination is charging lower rates for children and for seniors at restaurants movie theaters and other forms of entertainment graphical analysis the third degree price discrimination figure demonstrates graphically the most frequently seen form of price discrimination charging different prices to different class of buyers the two side to side graphs are for the single pure monopolist selling its products say software in two segregated part of the market the figure illustrates demand for software by small business customers figure b the demand for software by students student versions of the software are identical to the versions sold to businesses but are available one per person only to customers with a student id presumably students have lower ability to pay for the software and are charged a discounted price the price discriminating monopolist represented here maximizes its total profit by dividing the market into two segments based on differences in elasticity of demand it then produces and sells the mr is equal to mc output in each market segment for visual clarity average total cost atc is assumed to be constant therefore mc equals atc at all output levels in the figure a the price discriminating monopolist charges a high price here pb to small business customers because they have relatively inelastic demand curves you can see the demand curve is steep for the product the firm charges a low price here ps to students because their demand curve is relatively elastic that is flat the firm's total profit from using price discrimination here the sum of the two green rectangles exceeds the profit not shown that would have occurred if the monopolist had charged the same price to all customers in this case students clearly benefit by paying a lower price than they would if the firm charged a single monopoly price therefore compared to the single price situation students buy more of the software and small businesses buy less profiting by price discrimination as a single price monopoly global air maximizes profit by selling 8000 trips a year at dollar 1200 a trip global's customers enjoy consumer surplus red red triangle global economic profit is dollar 4.8 million a year the blue rectangle global revises its fare structures it now offers no restriction at dollar 1800 seven day advance purchase refundable at dollar 1600 14 day advance purchases must stay at least seven days at dollar 1200 after price discrimination global sells 2000 units at each of its four new fares its economic profit increases by dollar 24 million a year to dollar 72 million a year which is shown by the original profit blue rectangle plus the blue steps global's consumer surplus shrinks to the sum of the red areas perfect price discrimination or first degree price discrimination Perfect price discrimination is an extreme case where a firm knows what each buyer is willing to pay. A firm that charges the maximum amount that buyers are willing to pay for each unit. For example, when you go to buy a car, seller tries to figure out what is the maximum you will pay. When you go to college and apply for financial aid, they want to charge you the highest you are willing to pay. 
In figure A, for simplicity, assume a firm with a constant marginal cost equal to $2 per unit, a non-price discriminating monopolist or single price monopolist would have to set one and only one price. The firm would face a downward MR curve, which is half the slope of the demand curve and would produce as long as MR is above MC. Output is QM and price would be set at $4 per unit. The firm would earn an economic profit of $2 per unit for every unit up to QM. Consumers would enjoy a consumer surplus equal to shaded area. Since the firm is not producing the optimum level of output that is P is equal to MC, there is dead weight loss shown by the red triangle. This is the single price monopoly or the one price. Uh, when a monopolist charges one price, this is the picture or the figure you can see. Now, in the second picture, we'll now consider what would happen if the firm could charge each consumer the maximum amount that consumer was willing to pay. In figure, if the firm could charge consumer A a price of $5.75, $5 the firm would earn $3.75 in profit on the unit and the consumer would get no consumer surplus. Going on to consumer B, if the firm would determine B's maximum willingness to pay and charge $5.50, Profits would be $3.5 and consumer surplus from firm B would be again zero. This would continue all the way to point C on the demand curve where total profit would be equal to the entire area under the demand curve and above the MC is equal to ATC line. If a firm can charge the maximum that anyone is willing to pay for each unit, then that price is marginal revenue. Demand curve actually becomes the marginal revenue curve Profit is the shaded area and the consumer surplus is zero. Perfectly priced discriminating monopolist will actually produce the efficient quantity of output QC, which is the same as the amount that would be produced had the industry been perfect competitive. The firm will continue to produce as long as benefits to consumers exceed marginal cost. It doesn't stop at QM. But when a monopolist can price discriminate, it reaps all the net benefits from higher production. There is no dead weight loss. There are two dif differences between perfect competition and perfect price discrimination. First, the distribution of the total surplus is different. It is shared by consumers and producers in perfect competition, while the producer gets it all with perfect price discrimination. Second, because the producer grabs all the total surplus, rent seeking becomes profitable. Rent seekers use resources to pursuit of monopoly and the bigger the rents, the greater is the incentive to use resources to pursue those rents. With free entry into rent seeking, the longer equilibrium outcome is that rent seekers use up the entire producer surplus.